Good morning to each of you. Uh, again, let me say how grateful I am and uh, appreciative of the invitation to come and to be able to share with you uh, lessons from God's Word. Uh, to the elders and to the congregation here from the bottom of my heart, thank you, especially for uh, keeping my son Matthew uh, in your prayers uh, during his injury. Uh, that's been traumatic, not only for him, but for his parents too. Uh, and it's uh, uh, very, uh, uh, it means a lot to us. It means a lot to us knowing that you've uh, uh, kept us and him in your prayers. Also, I hope that you know how blessed you are in having uh, a group of elders like this uh, to be able to serve you. Not all congregations uh, across the world are blessed to have an eldership, even deacons. And I hope you uh, are thankful for that. And I hope that you're able to tell them that too. And to also realize how blessed you are to have uh, Brother John and Sister Rhonda uh, in working with you uh, in to help uh, teaching and, and preaching and with the classwork. And, and that, uh, um, that's a great blessing. And I hope you tell them that. We've been in a series of studies that we began Friday night with character. And considering character, various things, this is supposed to turn on when I push this button. So there it goes. All right. Very good. We live in an age of technology that everything is instant. And I was asked to present material that uh, was both uh, an encouragement for our young people, but at the same time fit uh, the adults as well. So we thought, okay, character. And living in the age of technology that we do, where everything is, is, is instant, uh, with social media, and, and you can know what I'm doing right now with whatever it is. Maybe I just bought a pair of shoes, and I want the world to know the pair of shoes that I bought. And, and so the world knows, and, and everyone can like or dislike the pair of shoes that I just bought. But you know, at the same time, what happens with social media, and this, this series of lessons isn't just about social media, I'm just picking on that one thing. Because it's also a place of slander. It's an awful tool that the devil can use at his disposal because it's instant. It is, and if we're not careful, even as the Lord's people, we can be very hurtful. Friday evening, we introduced character, and we talked about dependability. We talked about dependability, and then we talked about joy and cheerfulness. Uh, uh, last evening, uh, yesterday morning, we spent some time talking about honesty. And in Bible study this morning, we talked about being holy. This morning, we're going to talk about gratitude and thanksgiving. Well, our uh, verse of reference that we've been using every single time comes from Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 4. Where the Apostle Paul writes and says, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance and perseverance character and character hope. Now, as we think about character, there's some different translations for you there from the King James, New King James, American Standard, the English Standard and Revised. Uh, for different words, uh, where if you see from the New King James and, and English Standard, character is rendered, but also uh, rendered is the word experience and approvedness, uh, probation. And, and really all of those words, if you think about them, that, that really makes up what character is. Our character, that really defines us, and our experiences build what our character is. And, and sandwiched, and we talked about this uh, as we introduced character Friday evening, uh, over here is character, and over here is reputation. And right between character and reputation is our conduct. Reputation is in the eyes of others. Conduct is a manifestation of our character. And although our conduct can build what we want our reputation to be, 
and we can do our own damage to our reputation sometimes. It's also possible for other people to do damage to our reputation, even when it's a lie, even when it's slander. So we have to be diligent in our service, not only to each other, but especially to the Lord, in being holy, so that when there are others, as Peter advises us and admonishes us when there are others who want to try and tear us down to speak evil of us, that by our good conduct, our character shows who we really are. Well, this morning we're going to talk about gratitude and thanksgiving. What is gratitude, really? Uh, If you look up in a dictionary, just a simple definition of gratitude, it's thankful appreciation. Thankful appreciation. It's an expression of being exceedingly glad in having grace or showing great thankfulness for what we've received. And really the idea is this. In order to be truly appreciative and truly thankful or grateful, we have to be willing to receive what is being given to us. For instance, let's say that we're sick. Perhaps we're ill, uh, maybe we're in the hospital, or perhaps we're at home or something like that, and, and someone uh, comes to our home, and, and they, they come in, and, and we haven't been well for a while, and, and they recognize that the dishes in the sink are piled up. And so they're willing to be of service to us, or servitude, and, and they do the dishes for us, and we're grateful for that, we're appreciative of that, and it's the ability, how many times have you, you don't want anybody to do your dishes, so you send them away. Essentially what you're saying is you weren't grateful. And I want you to think about that just for a moment. In order for us to be Christians, really, we need to receive the servitude Now that really, that's humble. It's humbling sometimes. It's humbling. We need to receive their servitude. We can't expect anyone else to be the Christian they need to be if we're not willing to receive their servitude. And if we're in the position of needing it, we need to accept it. Now that's just a simple example. Sometimes it's more than that. It's also being able to receive it And here's where the thankful part, here's here's where the gratitude is, is it's receiving it, knowing that it's not necessary to pay it back. Receiving the favor with thanksgiving and gratitude that the person who was service to us, servitude to us, they're not expecting anything in return. I had a friend one time who needed some help. And... I said, okay, we'll help, we'll help. And so we go help. And so a little while later, uh, a couple weeks go by, uh, they call us and they said, okay, what do you guys need? I said, well, we're, we're good. We, we really don't need anything. He says, no, 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 no. We didn't, we didn't expect your help if you're not going to get some help back. And, and we tried to explain to them what, what servitude is. <laughs> and and they, they just, they didn't get it. You see, servitude in the eyes of the Lord isn't about payback. It's not about that. Thanksgiving and gratitude, whenever we're trying to express that, it's not about rendering payment or or payback. Notice a couple of of things here. Uh, One, uh, with, with Jonah. As a simple illustration, in Jonah chapter six or chapter four and verse six, uh, the book of Jonah, in a way, is is sort of comical. Um, You know, the further Jonah walked away from God, the further down he went. He went down to uh, to to get in the ship. He went down to Joppa, went down into the boat, went down into the sea. The further away from God Jonah went, the further down he went. And finally, when Jonah realized where he, where he was and that he, regardless of what he thought, he, he was going to go to Nineveh and preach because that's what God wanted him to do. So finally, Jonah goes to Nineveh and he preaches. To, and of all the things that, that Jonah least expected, Nineveh actually repented. They did it. And so Jonah can't believe it. So he goes outside of the city to pout. 
So he goes outside of the city, he builds this little booth, and he's sitting in it to be in the shade. So God plants a plant, and, and, and it grows, and, and it provides shade for Jonah. And Jonah, oh, he's thankful. He's thankful that God provided a shade. Well, the next, God takes it away, <laughs> just to show Jonah. But there was nothing that Jonah could do to pay God back. All he could do was express thanks. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28, if you want to turn there real quickly. Hebrews 12 and 28. Notice what the Hebrew writer says. Therefore, as I pointed out in Bible class, anytime you see the word therefore, you have to look and see what it's there for. So you need to read uh, at least the... Uh, 10 or 12 verses ahead of that, but we won't do that right now. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, if you're concerned about the Lord's church, well, we need to be doing our part, but really, let the Lord be concerned about the Lord's church. Let's just make sure we're doing our part, too, in service to the kingdom. Since we're receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace, by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Notice that phrase, let us have grace. The Revised Standard Version uses the word grateful. Let us be grateful. We have been given this kingdom. And we have the opportunity to be part of it. Let's be grateful for that. Let's be grateful for that. So with gratitude and thanksgiving, notice a couple of passages. They're on the board for you. Romans uh, 16, verses 3 through 4. Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my fellow workers in Christ Jesus, who risk their own necks for my life, to whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Notice how Paul phrases, do you think he's grateful for these two people? Absolutely. Absolutely. In a way... Uh, for, from McAllister, Oklahoma's perspective in southeastern Oklahoma. Perhaps you consider it uh, here in, in the uh, greater Oklahoma City area too, or Edmond. And, and, and down in our neck of the woods, though, we, we sort of seem like we're tucked away. Tucked away from... McAllister is two hours away from really anywhere. Two hours plus to Fort Smith, two hours plus to Sherman or the Dallas area, uh, two hours plus to Oklahoma City, about an hour and a half, two hours to Tulsa. Uh, so if you want to go anywhere that's of some kind of significance, it's about two hours. So we're sort of tucked away down there. Um, we're on the map, but you have to use the map to get to us. And in a way, it's kind of special. And sometimes, in a way, it's kind of sad. I'd really like for y'all to come see us. But you need to want to go. Right? Well, I'm saying all that to say this. Sometimes, we're thankful to be where we are. And we're, we're thankful to be secluded, kind of. But sometimes what happens is we take that for granted. We take it for granted where we are. We take it for granted what we have. We take it for granted who we are, and we're not appreciative of what has been given for everything. And we could start with the life of Christ. Because of the life of Christ. Notice what Paul says here again. Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my fellow workers in Christ Jesus. It's all because of him that any of this is possible. And now Paul says, they risk their own lives for my life. You remember what Jesus says, no greater love is there than for a friend to give his life. So Paul points that out. Paul says, I give thanks. As was read for us by Micah just a little bit ago, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 3 through 5. Again, what Paul says in writing to Timothy. He says, I thank God. And notice what Paul says that he's thanking God about. If you drop down to, uh, uh, after his, his uh, uh, introductory comments there, he says, uh, I thank God being mindful of your tears. 
I thank God, greatly desiring to see you. I thank God when I call to remembrance your genuine faith. I thank God when I remember your grandmother and your mother. We can look around us and, and we can see family. Friends, I am so thankful. Then I can look at some of you I, I have known for a long time. Some of you I only met this morning. But I am so thankful. I am grateful that you have chosen Christ. I am so thankful that you have taken time to assemble. There's other things that you could have done today. It's easy. I'm thankful. I am thankful for my family. I am thankful that my parents are Christians. I am thankful that my grandparents on both sides of my family are Christians. I am thankful that my great-grandparents on at least one side of my family are Christians. Four generations raised up in the Lord's church. I'm thankful. The better part of my family hasn't known anything else but the Lord's church. I am so thankful. Because there's families that don't know that. There might be families sitting here this morning that's the first generation in the Lord's church. Be thankful for that. Be grateful for that. Don't take it for granted what's been done in obedience to the gospel, even in your family. Three points we're going to, or, or three different occasions through Scripture that we're going to look at this morning uh, of, of occasions of, of, th of, of thankfulness. And we're going to uh, try and answer three questions a a as well. But for you to ask, and for you to um, uh, ponder, let's say, as we move through three different uh, uh, points here in just a moment. Uh, what are three things for which you are most grateful? Well, these are just some, I, I just put this down. Uh, Christ and the forgiveness of sins. You know, shouldn't that be at the top of the list? It really should. That should be at the top. For every single one of us, that should be. If it's not, we really need to talk. If anything comes before Christ in your life, Friends, we really need to talk because Jesus said himself, if anything comes before me, you're not worthy of me. And he's not being arrogant. He is the Christ. He has the authority to say that. He is at the right hand of the Father. And that's not a position. That's a place of authority. He has the right to say that. And He has chosen us, those who will listen to Him. Well, what's next in your life? Uh, could it be the brethren? Perhaps family? Uh, both? Would those maybe be equal? Um, perhaps? Uh, maybe it might be someone else. Uh, maybe, maybe it would be uh, 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 friends, or, or whatever the case might be. Uh, my best friend uh, is, is uh, in the assembly uh, at, at A Street in McAllister, uh, this morning, she uh, took our son uh, to uh, worship services this morning. My mother is helping her, and uh, uh, that's my wife. She has uh, Matthew there, and uh, he, he wanted to show everybody his wheelchair. So um, uh, he, there they are. They're uh, at worship services at McAllister this morning. So yes, both family and my best friend. Um, they're at the worship service, and the brethren there too. I miss them. Uh, but I'm grateful that I have them, just simply as the brethren. Three things for which you are most grateful. You need to know what they are, and you need to let them know that you're grateful for them. You need to do that as often as you can. Well, three passages we're going to look at, and we're going to ask three questions. Uh, so, uh, in these three passages, one from First Chronicles 29 then from Luke 17 and Romans 6. In these three passages, who was grateful? Why were they grateful? And what was done to express their gratitude? So if you will, with me first, let's look at um, 1 Chronicles um, 29. 
So take just a moment and turn back in your Old Testament to 1 Chronicles 29. It comes right before the second one. So if you're in the second one, um, go back a little further, and the first one comes right before the second one. So right at the end of it, chapter 29, beginning in verse 6. Then the leaders of the fathers' houses, leaders of the tribes of Israel, the captains of thousands and of hundreds, with the officers over the king's work, offered willingly. First of all, let's identify that's a lot of people. A lot of people. They gave for the work of the house of God, 5,000 talents and 10,000 derricks of gold, 10,000 talents of silver, 18,000 talents of bronze, and 100,000 talents of iron. And whoever had precious stones gave them to the treasury of the house of the Lord into the hand of Jehiel the Gershonite. And the people rejoiced, for they had offered willingly, because with a loyal heart they had offered willingly to the Lord. And King David also rejoiced greatly. Let's just say that great Rejoicing is taking place because of what is happening. It's a wondrous occasion. Therefore, verse 10, David blessed the Lord. If you just started at verse 10, you wouldn't have any idea why David is blessing the Lord. You need to see the word therefore and look and see what it's there for. Therefore, David blessed the Lord before all the assembly. That's a lot of people. And David said, Blessed are you, Lord God of Israel, our Father, forever and ever. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power and the glory, the victory and the majesty, for all that is in heaven and in earth is yours. Notice what David does here. All these people gave all this stuff. And David said, Lord, it's yours. It was yours to begin with. It's yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord. And you are exalted as head over all. Both riches and honor come from you, and you reign over all. In your hand is power and might. In your hand it is to make great and to give strength to all. Now, therefore, our God, we thank you and praise your glorious name. But who am I and who are my people that we should be able to offer so willingly as this, for all things come from you, and of your own we have given you. For we are aliens and pilgrims before you, as, we're, as were all our fathers. Our days on earth are as a shadow and without hope. O Lord our God, all this abundance that we have prepared to build you a house for your holy name is from your hand and is all your own. You know, those are words that we really ought to pay attention to. We really ought to pay attention to what David has just said because we just shared in something a moment ago that's very fitting for this. How richly we have been blessed. Not just because of where we live, but because of really truly how rich we are. I've been in other countries. Some of them not pretty. I've been to places where just a piece of cardboard and sheet iron makes the wall for someone's home. Where pesos are scarce. Where $20 of American money would pay for everything for that month. Medicine, food, rent, all of it, 20 bucks. We are so blessed. And sometimes we look around and we say, oh, how am I going to afford this, that, or the other? Well, here, why or who, first of all, who was grateful? Well, it was David and the leaders of Israel. David and the leaders of Israel. Why were they grateful? Well, from a loyal heart, notice how it is phrased there, from a loyal heart. Verse 9. 
Then the people rejoiced, for they had offered willingly, because with a loyal heart they had offered willingly to the Lord. And King David also rejoiced greatly. What was done to express their gratitude? They used words. Words. Words were used to express glory, honor, and power with thanksgiving towards the Lord. Anytime anyone ever does something for you in servitude, I hope that you use words to express your thanksgiving to them. Use words. I don't know what has happened to people uh, in, in just in general, in culture, especially in this country in the last 20 years. But the inability to express thanks is really atrocious. Why can't we say thank you? Is it that hard? Is it that difficult? And when that infiltrates itself from the world into the Lord's church, friends, that's awful. That's just awful. We must have the ability to express gratitude and thanksgiving. And children, I want you to listen to me just for a moment. Your parents do so much for you. Tell them thank you. Don't take it for granted. If you had a bowl of cereal for breakfast this morning, you need to know where that came from. If you had eggs and bacon or pancakes or whatever it was that you had this morning, it might have been a granola bar. I hope you know that in other places in the world there's children that don't have those things. Say thank you. Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17. Beginning in verse 11. I've never had leprosy. Really hope I never don't. I've never had boils. I really hope I never don't. I suffered a broken wrist in football one time. I really don't want to experience that again. My son broke his leg. I wish it would have been given to me. Couldn't. But here's ten lepers. Beginning in verse 11. Now it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria in Galilee. Then as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men who were lepers who stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, Go, show yourselves to the priests. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. Verse 15, And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. Well, who was grateful? One. One of the ten lepers. A foreigner. The assumption is that the other nine perhaps were Jews. This one a foreigner, a Samaritan. Why was he grateful? He saw that he was healed. Not only that he saw that he was healed, but he recognized from who he was healed. And he went back to the source. He went back to the source. What was done to express his gratitude? Ha! 
Guess what? He used words. Isn't that amazing? He glorified God with a loud voice. Do this sometime. It's wonderful. It's just absolutely wonderful. Someone does something very kind for you. When you go to their home, stand at the curb, and with a loud voice, tell them how grateful you are. See if they come to the door. If they don't, try a little louder. Now, I know our homes have these double-pane windows, and they're insulated, and they're sealed brick homes, things like that. Might even make the neighbors look a little bit. But you know what the point of it is? Gratitude. Thanksgiving. But why is it that sometimes we walk up and we go, you know, we go, thank you. And that's it. Hug them. Say thank you. Show our gratitude. There's a reason that we read in the pages of the New Testament an awful picture of our Lord hanging on the cross and His disciples standing, most of them afar off. Afar off. Yet at least one, the disciple whom he loved, John, near, near. Romans chapter 6, just two verses. Lessons just about yours. Romans chapter 6, verses 17 and 18. The Apostle Paul here writes, says, But God be thanked, that though you were slaves of sin, Yet you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine to which you were delivered and have been set free from sin. Having been set free from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. See, here Paul says something very simple. There was a period of time in our lives that perhaps we, uh, not perhaps, in fact we were, outside of Christ. And we had received something, some preaching. Someone delivered to us the doctrine of Christ in truth and in simplicity. Not only did we receive it, but we obeyed it. We obeyed it. And as a result of obeying it, between verses 17 and and verse 18... Something happened in obeying the gospel. We found the blood of Christ. We found that blood of Christ in the watery grave of baptism. We recognized what it meant to obey the gospel. To obey the gospel. To provide God a good answer of our conscience. As Peter says in 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 21. To use words. Yes, I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. To show a change called repentance. To humble ourselves. Knowing what awaited for us. A resurrection. Very dear friend of mine, perhaps some of you know him, Brother Shane Carrington. Used this phrase one time. He said, when's your birthday? Not necessarily the day that we came into this world as an infant, but the day that we came up out of the watery grave of baptism, newborn in Christ. When's your birthday? Here we see in verse 18 that we have been set free from sin and we have become slaves of righteousness. Who should be grateful Those who were, past tense, slaves of sin. Why should we be grateful? 
because through obedience we have been set free. We've been set free. Free from what? Free from sin. And because now choosing Christ, we don't have to worry about that life that we once had because now we can be holy. We can choose this life and we can follow the steps of Christ. We can begin to imitate Him. And what a wonderful life that is. What should be done to express our gratitude becoming slaves unto righteousness? We illustrated Friday evening that we as members of the Lord's body ought to present ourselves. We should show the world our homes, showcase homes of Christ, not houses. Showcase homes in Christ. And friends, whenever we invite others to our house, even whenever we invite others to our homes that are in Christ, how dare we be critics of each other for a house? Look at Christ in that home. And invite others. Invite our neighbors, our co-workers, our friends at school. So that we can share Him. You want this congregation to continue to grow? Show Christ. Share the gospel. If you're not in Christ this morning, why not begin now? What happened to the Gentiles when they were ungrateful? God gave them up. Romans chapter 1. What does Paul say about worry and thanksgiving? To be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. The art of showing, and this is key to this lesson. I want you to take this away from you. The art of showing gratitude and thanksgiving is thanks living. Thanking God for the gift of life and living it triumphantly. Resisting the devil. Thanking God for your talents and abilities by accepting them as obligations to be invested for the good of others. Get busy about Christ. Friends, that's serious. Thanking God for opportunities by accepting them as a challenge to achievement. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. And I'm going to share it. If you're going to a restaurant for lunch this afternoon, ask the waiter or the wait waitress. Ask them where they go to church. If they go. Thank them for serving you. Don't show it in a tip. I'm not telling you not to... Hold that back. But tell them. Use words. Thanking God by giving your hands and your arms and your legs and your voice to your thankful spirit. It's called sacrifice. Hebrews chapter 13, verses 12 through 16 from the English Standard Version. So Jesus also suffered outside the gate in order to sanctify the people through his own blood. Therefore, let us go to him outside the camp and bear the reproach he endured. For here we have no lasting city, but we seek the city that is to come. Through him then let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God that is the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Are you in Christ? It all starts there. If you're not, friends, why not choose right now? You have right now to obey the gospel. You don't know what happens 30 minutes outside these doors. Five minutes outside these doors. You don't know. Choose Christ. Put Him on in baptism, having confessed His name and repented of sin. Put Him on. Wear Him, being raised in newness of life. If you are in Christ and your gratitude and thanksgiving isn't where it needs to be, change and show that change. If you'd like this group of people to pray with you in that regard, ask them to. Right now as we stand and sing.